All right. So it gets pretty fun at this point because we're moving things around. We're blending them. And once we've gotten rid of the hard edges where things overlap, then we can take our opacity on our eraser down a little bit. I'm going to go to around 30. And then we just start softly taking away and it will transition not just the texture but also the color between that purple and the orange. And that will help everything just kind of sit together a little bit better. But where I want the hard edge shifts, like by the jaw, I want to let that be nice and clean. Now underneath here, I can start to transition one set of scales into another set of scales to get that upper lip. But let them overlap each other or show through each other just a little bit until they separate. And this is why it's really important to have the pressure sensitivity turned on for your, your tablet. So I can be really targeted. And you can see those back teeth now coming through. Now if I want to sharpen it, I can go back to my lasso. With that three pixel feather and then just cut out that upper lip. All right, the lighting still doesn't match, but now I've got kind of the angle of everything looking pretty believable. Now I'm going to go to my owl feathered horns, and this is going to be tricky, but I, I wanted to include it so it, it shows you that difficulty. So a texture like feathers is very different than cutting out a texture like scales. So what I'm going to do is use my magic wand and have contiguous turned on. Maybe I'll up my tolerance to 32. Hold down shift. And with that same three pixel, huh, why is it not adding? With that same three pixel feather, I'm going to keep adding to my magic wand selection. Holding down shift should do it for me, but if it's not, just click there. That will make it additive. And I'm just trying to get all that background around these feathered horns. But notice there's a lot of green showing through the feathers because feathers are translucent. So that's something I might have to fix with color balance and direct adjustments. But so far this is working okay. And with that three pixel feather, it should give me a fairly soft, somewhat translucent edge to these feathered horns. I might leave it there since that's not green. I don't want to start selecting other colors. So I'll zoom in so you can see what the feather does. So I took it away. That's one. As I keep hitting delete, it will keep biting away a little bit more until I hit command D to deselect. And you can see all that green that's still there, but this is a good start for making a soft, a soft edge. Okay, now I can take my eraser at 100% opacity, again, pressure sensitive, and I can take down those hard edges. That's why I like to have that gray background, so I can really see all the, the pixels clearly. So with that pressure sensitive, even with a really big brush, I can still kind of cut away in a pretty controlled way. Leave it nice and soft. And I'm going to show you something that's pretty, pretty nice because the greens are really only on the outside here. 
I'm going to show you how we can use hue saturation to just play with the green. We don't need to affect all the colors just to adjust the green. So the way I do that is on that layer. Looks a lot better though. You get rid of this hard edge. Okay, so on this layer, I'm going to go to adjustments under image adjustments, hue saturation, and then instead of using master settings, I'm just going to go to the greens. I'm going to try really saturating them. You see, that's the only place the greens exist. So then I can actually desaturate them. Take that green down, or I can even change it to a different color under hue. So I can change them to kind of golden yellow, which is pretty helpful. And then desaturate them a little bit. Then I'll go to cyan, which is similar, or maybe yellow, which is similar. But this is going to affect the yellows in other places too. I'm just going to shift that yellow hue away from green a little bit more towards the orange. Then take the saturation down a tiny bit. So you can customize the color that you affect with your hue saturation options. All right now that that's cut out, that lets me focus on this one a little bit more. And I can cut that out with my three pixel feather. Ooh, I like those spikes. I don't think I'll be able to get those in, but they're fun. Or should I use those spikes? Should I give the a little mohawk of spikes? Why not? So I'm going to internally composite here. I'm going to grab these spikes, lasso them, and then duplicate them onto their own layer. Then I move above and then move to where I can see them. Yeah, on the top of the head of the, the L. All right. Then I can erase away. And blend them in. Now that's the 100% eraser. Now to, to kind of blur them in, I'm going to use the lower opacity, around 30%. so that all those textures kind of show through each other. And then I got to cut out the uh, the horns. So I do that with the magic wand. And I've got to cut out from underneath this one, this background. So I'm going to use the magic wand again. Try to delete all this stuff. But I don't want to do too much. Now remember, whenever you have a selection, this is feathered now, but you can add to it. I can hold down Shift, and I can add the cutouts of these teeth to my selection. What happened? So remember to hold down shift. I think I let go at some point, and that's what made it tougher. Okay, now I hit delete, I get that feather, do it one more time, and I get a pretty, pretty clean edge. It could be a little bit cleaner right here, so I'll go in with my lasso. It's just because the colors were really close. All right. And then here, again, the colors are really close. So I'm just going to find kind of my organic edge with my three pixel feather. 
cut it out. Same thing with the, the horn feathers. I find my edge, like when I was cutting out grass of my landscape. I want to soften it. That's what I do. Make that a little bit more opaque, and merge all those together, and then move that underneath. There we go. And then got to pay attention to where, what you want overlapping what. So now I've got the head kind of all together. And I don't need this back part. I'm going to use my 100% soft eraser and take out this hard edge. OK, now I'm going to move all of these into one folder, just like I did it for the body, I'm going to call this the head. And now I'm going to take that whole head, I'm going to save the work, Command S, you'll see it change here. Boom, boom. And one way I ensure that it changes is I, I mark it with green. So I can watch that green disappear. And now I'm going to move that head onto the body. So Option Command T with that whole group takes all of those layers and lets me move them together. And then I can move that whole thing above the body layer. right? And now I'm going to Option Command T and kind of scale it down. And let's see, I can't warp it when it's multiple layers grouped together, but I can distort it. So that means I kind of can shift it at the corners and help it match the anatomy a little bit. I just noticed a problem that's a pretty big problem. But it's one I can fix as long as I notice it. And that's that I have two tongues. <laughs> so I have a tongue that's stuck to the top, and a tongue that's there. So that's, that's a weird thing. So to fix that, I'm simply going to take that, that tongue aspect, which comes from this layer, and I'm going to use a new shortcut, which are pretty used to probably in word processors, just like we've done copy and paste before. Now we're going to do the cut function. The cut function is command X. So it looks like it just deleted it, but command X deleted it, but also copies it onto the clipboard. So now if I hit command V paste, it will paste it on, but in a new layer, which then allows me to do things like option command T and warp it and rotate it. Try this. How do I get to merge that with the existing tongue? Nope, it's better if it's flipped. So we're going to warp it. And we're going to match it with that other tongue. Even transition its color a little bit. And I just use my eraser, soft edged, maybe a little bit smaller because we're dealing with pretty small elements here. Get rid of that hard edge. And then go to low opacities. 